Hey everybody, it's Chris Demetric here, and I wanted to give you a heads up on this video. It's going to be a two-parter. Generally, I don't keep my videos more than five to seven minutes at the most, and because of the amount of prep and preparation of the paints and the area, I broke it down to two parts. Uh, I'm going to post them both within one week, so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing, but it's this really cool technique in which you pour acrylic paints to make these cool swirl patterns. There's no woodworking in this, so if you're into a woodworking, you might want to move on, but the results are super cool. You're going to get a really kick out of it. So uh, anyways, part one is going to be the preparation of the ingredients and my work area. Part two, if you just want to see me pour the, the you know, the paints and do, uh, you know, to do that technique, just, just uh, fast forward to the one at the end of the week. But I uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, I'll let you get on with it. Uh, if you have any questions, post them down below and then look forward in a few more days, the uh, part two in which I actually come with some results and I... And I'll show you a couple different techniques. So, anyways, hope you enjoy the video. Hey everybody, it's Chris Demetric here from TDW. And I am wearing my painter shirt. Everybody's got one of those shirts that they always wear when they paint. And this is mine. Um, but, I'm going to be doing a little bit of an art our project here. Um, I've been watching some really cool videos on what is a poured acrylic um, paint uh, project in which you use canvases to loosen up the acrylic paint so that they'll flow and be able to be swiped or swirled and making some really interesting effects and uh, a couple examples of them would be, this one's a little darker, but you can see how it has all of those different kind of swirl effects in there. Uh, this would be another uh, another one here that I had made. Uh, again, the more you look at it, the more details you see these sort of like cells that are created and stuff. And it's a really interesting technique and I really wanted to try it and I thought maybe I'd do a quick video while I attempt to do this. Now these are my first couple attempts and they're kind of dark. So I went out and got some new supplies. I'm ready to try this again properly. So I thought I would review the supplies and approximate cost it involved to, to get everything together to do this. So, uh, well, let me show you. So the first thing is you need acrylic paints. Now, in most of the cases, you can kind of see here, I've got sort of a wall of different tubed acrylic paints, which all work pretty well. Um, you're going to go through paint uh, quite a lot of it. So I ended up picking at Michael's. These were these uh, basics, quite a lot of uh, acrylic paint and good quality. This package was $34, but with the coupon you can download any week you want. I think it was, I think I paid $22 for that. And that gives me all the primary colors. And that gives me enough to be able to, to do quite a few of them with that. Uh, the next thing is, is, once you have the paint, you really gotta thin it down. So, um, there are quite a few mediums that you can use to thin it down. Everything from a combination of school glue, like white Elmer's glue with water. Um, there is a couple products you can buy online. But my best thing was I went to Home Depot and on Home Depot I got a product called Flood and it is a um, called Flowtrill. Flowtrill and you gotta get the one that says latex base. I think this was like eight bucks and what I'll do is I'll use this in conjunction with the paints to make it so that it's pourable and uh, and not degradate the quality of the paint. Um, once you do that, the next thing you're going to add to it is going to be water. Now, this is just distilled water. Buy a gallon of distilled water. Hard like this, and I put it in one of these bottles so that it can easily um, weigh it. Now, usually you do two parts to one part, and you can measure it out um, in these. I usually use these little containers. So I'm going to pour the paint in these, so I want to make sure that you have some different sized uh, plastic containers. Instead of filling them to a certain height, I'm going to do them by, uh, by weights. So it would be great if you had it, it is a nice uh, scale. Um, because I'm going to do this by weight, uh, it'll make it easier because then it's upscalable to as much as I want. If I'm doing small uh, projects or larger products, I could just scale it up and it should be good. Now the one thing that makes those layers pop and become cells and stuff is you need some type of uh, oil which will be a silicone based oil. The 
best way that I found is to pick up this drop oil, the silicone drop oil. That works the best, but I have seen other people use WD-40, but you got to get the silicone one. And then I've seen a few people actually use, this is oil for the hair, there's certain, um, uh, certain uh, chemicals that are in there that help, but this, um, if you just happen to have it, is this uh, oil for the hair. You need something to paint on it. So on Amazon, I picked up a pack of these, I think it was like 12 bucks, and I got uh, 8 by 10 canvases. And anyways, that's the, uh, that's the canvases, but you really got to prep the canvases. So what I did, see, is I went ahead and I uh, painted them white. So I ended up picking up just a, and I got this at Walmart for like 6 bucks or something. And that's just some white gesso paint. So now I've got these ready to go, and I'll we'll go ahead and make a couple. So let's let's give it a whirl here. So to make sure that cleanup would be a breeze, I went and bought some cheap drop cloths, and I acted like I was Dexter and laid these things out everywhere so that any drips I get will clean up pretty easy. So now my area is all ready to go. You can join me for part two, where I actually uh, prep the paint and create the uh, the masterpiece. So join me here in a couple days.